Hi, this is James Ng with Old Capital, and I'm here with David Austin of JLL. And today we're going to be talking about a new deal that just hit the market. So, David, thanks for joining. Um, maybe to kick it off, give people a little bit about your background, and then we will get into this new deal. Sure. Thanks, James. Uh, born and raised in, in Dallas, Texas. Went to A&M for, for undergrad and have been here at JLL for almost 10 years now. Focus on the, the class B and C uh, space in Dallas, Fort Worth. All right. I, I did not even know that. So um, I'm sorry you went to Texas A&M. I went to UT, but I didn't even know you went to Texas A&M. So <laughs> let's start off with uh, Vistas on the Park. So 288 unit deal in Louisville. Maybe give us a little backstory on um, sort of how this property, how long the, the sellers own this property and sort of what do you what do you guys think about this location? Sure, sure. Um, this owner is, is named Peter Spinato. He's owned it for about three years now. Uh, bought it from a group called Tyneberg prior to that. Um, and the, the strategy he really implemented here was, was continuing the renovation program that the previous ownership had, had started. Uh, so that's, that's where we find ourselves today. Really strong location off I-35. Um, you know, you're nearby uh, walkable to a couple of the schools, good Louisville schools, a um, bunch of, of grocers in the nearby area. So a strong demographic base that uh, has the opportunity to, to come in and institute a new renovation program and, and push rents. Right. I mean, I, I pulled this out of, I think your OM or flyer, just the amount of stuff in that little pocket, whether you're getting down I-35, you can get down to Costco and sort of the mall right there. And then you're just north of sort of um, Capel and all, all of the, the nicer um, residential down there. So, and cl relatively close to DFW airport and sort of the legacy West area. So, um, yeah, that's, that's one of the major appeals of this area. You're, you're about a 10 to 15 minute drive from DFW airport. You're about 20 minute drive from legacy. So you're, you're a nice, uh, lower cost alternative to those locations while still having the density of, of fully built out neighborhoods. Um, and, and to go along with that, all of the amenities, as you can see on this page. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think any new construction is going to really hit in this pocket. I mean, it's mostly a sort of B market just in that general area, just because of the land and uh, what's been what's been built. So here's some exterior pictures, maybe talk about um, the exterior and then maybe some of the amenity sets at this property because it, it is a fairly large property. It is, it is. And you have frontage on two major roads, which is, which is nice to pull in drive-by traffic. Property was built in a few phases. The effective year built is 1978. So some of it was built in the early to mid seventies and some of it was, was built in the mid eighties. So you have a nice continuum of, of product that you're offering. And then the amenity set is, is unlike any that we've really seen of, of this age. You've got a nice, a nice size leasing office. You have a fitness center. You have a pretty big size pool. Uh, there's a kid's splash pad uh, attached to the pool. There's a playground. There's a full-size soccer field with two goals. Um, there's a sand volleyball court, basketball court, community garden, uh, two electric vehicle charging spaces. So it's a, it's a full amenity set that caters to the good schools in the area and, and really attracts families to the property. Yeah, I think not the seller, but the seller before uh, is based out of Austin. So we, we see a little Austin influence there with the electric car charging. Um, right. and, the, and then in terms of um, just sort of apartment features, uh, I thought this was unique in, in terms of individual HVAC and hot water heaters throughout the property. Any other sort of um, building features you want to highlight for people? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the main one. Functionally, uh, you know, having individual HVAC and hot water heaters, you're not having to deal with uh, some of the pains that can come with a chiller system and a, and a boiler system. Uh, so that, that's really a positive. And I think through uh, the recent storms we've had is, is really a positive. You've also got four laundry facilities uh, where all the equipment is, is owned uh, by the property. So that's a nice bonus that you're, you know, capturing all of that revenue. All right. And then, um, so these are some of the pictures of the interiors, you know, black appliances, um, 
you know, vinyl flooring, things like that. I think we wanted to highlight um, a property down the street and sort of compare and contrast that one versus this one. And so here's, here's um, I think, a snapshot from a competing website and maybe talk about how, how the rents compare sort of on a floor plan basis compared to this. Sure, list. sure. So as, as we talked about earlier, uh, the current ownership continued the renovation program that was started uh, back in 2014 by the Time Burbs. And so that program is a little bit dated at this point and has the darker uh, color scheme that was really going on in the 2013, 2014, 2015 timeframe. Since then, there's really been this migration to lighter, lighter color scheme like you see here at Cottages, white and gray color tones. Um, so the, the good thing is that we've got uh, black appliances in, in almost all of the units. You can either upgrade those to, to stainless like you see here at Cottages or just keep those until they, they need to be upgraded. All the cabinet fronts at Vistas are the original wood that have been painted that brown color tone. So I think doing you know, new, new cabinet fronts like you see here at Cottages with the updated color scheme and new poles would really elevate the finish. Um, it's also a benefit that a lot of the units have forward flooring already. I would do replacement there as needed. So I think you can do a low cost uh, renovation to, to greatly improve the, the appeal of the interior of these units just by changing color scheme. So, you know, new cabinet fronts, uh, adding new backsplash, potentially going with stainless steel appliances, updated plumbing fixtures and light fixtures would go a long way. So this, this picture that you see here on the right, this is a screenshot taken from the Cottages on Edmonds uh, website this morning that shows what their avail availability is on similar size units. So this Ed, uh, Cottages only has three floor plans. All three of them are, are fairly applicable to, to uh, floor plans at Vistas. So if you back into similar per square foot figures at Cottages and apply that to the, the floor plans we have here at Vistas, it shows rent potential of about $165. Uh, so we feel like uh, there's, there's room to go on, on the rents and, uh, you know, Basswood Manor across the street is, is under contract right now. Um, they're going to be going through an in-depth uh, in uh, value add program as well and pushing rents. So that's good that your neighbor across the street is going to be pushing similar upgrades and uh, potential residents coming through the property will, will be aware of that and should, should be well received. No, that's perfect. Yeah, cottages is... is, is like, I think, I think you have half, less than half a mile south of Vistas. Um, so it's a good, it's a good comp um, to that property. And I, I think Cottage is actually a little bit smaller property. I don't think it's as big. And I, I would, I would say the amenity set's probably a little bit lighter there. Um, if I can That's remember, because right. I think that property sold uh, three or four years ago. Um, right. But in terms of, you know, upgrading the interiors, is there anything else, um, in terms of other income that people could be looking at um, in terms of upside for this deal? Yeah, there's a few. Um, the two biggest ones are probably parking and yards off first floor units. So there's a number of, of opportunities to go in and add enclosed yards off first floor units. And in, in our analysis here, we, we added 75 at $100 charge. Um, and then parking. Right now, there's, there's no reserved and there's no covered parking. So instituting both of those I feel like would be a good idea and help differentiate you from, from some of the competitors in the area that, that don't have that amenity. Um, package locker, locker system is, is something that's, that's growing a lot right now um, as, as the world goes more towards this Amazon, Amazon world where people aren't, aren't going to physical store locations as often. Lots of packages are being received by properties. And so it's a great way for, for ownership to generate additional income by adding these locker systems and charging a fee of five to $7 a month. Um, and then valet trash as well. They're currently uh, just doing standard trash at $7 a month. Uh, so instituting valet and bumping that up to $25 a month would, would generate a lot of additional income on a monthly basis. All right, and then do you guys have a whisper price set on this deal yet? Yeah, we're whispering 40.5 million, which is 140,000 per unit. Basswood Manor across the street is a 1970 built property that's under contract at about 130 a door. 
uh, they're going to be spending spending more money there. So the basis feels good relative to uh, you know that asset. And the other thing we want to point out at our pricing, this is about a four and a half cap tax adjusted. Everything else that we're, we're seeing price in the market right now is, is about a four, 4.0. And so we feel like this is good additional yield, which really should help you um, on the proceeds front if you're, if you're attempting to get an agency loan. Yeah, I mean, we looked at it sort of Fannie, Freddie, Bridge. Um, you know, on the Fannie side, um, we're seeing the deal come in about that 70 to 75% LTV, just depending on where you sort of take taxes and you take insurance. Um, so that'll be probably right in that 325 to three and a half percent interest rate right now with three to five years IO. Um, you know, Fannie, depending on sort of your your strength in sponsorship, um, we've you know their standard 12 months PNI is what the the sort of box is right now. But they've said if you have stronger sponsorship and the property is is well occupied like this property, that you could go down to maybe six months of interest only on. Um, your reserve. So that's good news. And I'll cut it probably about in half of what it was before. Freddie Mac conventional, um, we're still seeing floating rate rates starting probably around that 3%, the 325 floating rate. And then your reserve is nine months PNI on that side. And then we're, we're doing a lot of bridge loans right now. And, you know, we're having people go anywhere from 75 to 80% of cost. Um, you're in that 375 to 4% starting rate. Um, with full term IO, three year term, and there's no reserve. So, um, you know, in terms of how Fannie and Freddie would underwrite this deal, I snapshotted this one on the left hand side, just sort of, you know, T3 annualized net rental, T12 other income, and uh, pretty much your standard expenses in terms of T12 utilities, um, payroll at 1200 a door, management fee at 3%. Um, I guess, David, we didn't touch on this, but has there been any, um, do you know if there's been any water savings or green program on this one or have they sort of just done it um, unit by unit? Yeah, none of, none of those programs have been instituted yet. So that'd be a great value add uh, okay. for the next group to do along with helping uh, on an agency loan. Okay, all right, perfect. And then we took taxes up to about 70%. So depending on your comfort level, maybe 70, 75% in that range on taxes. And so it, it essentially sized to about 70, 75% on Fannie and Freddie debt on this particular deal. So um, David, have you guys, I know it just came out, but do you have a call for offers date or are you guys taking offers as they come? What's sort of the, the strategy for buyers um, in terms of um, looking at this deal? Yeah, so we will call for offers in about five weeks. Um, I think the seller will, will entertain preemptive offers, but would like to exchange out of this, this property um, and so the, the additional time during the marketing process may be helpful for them in, in uh, finding their upleg uh, acquisitions. Um, so we'll, we'll announce that probably in, in two to three weeks of when that firm offer date is going to be. All right. So um, I guess email is probably the best to, to reach out to David if you guys um, want to set up a tour or get some more information about the deal. Um, the email is here, david.austin at am.jll.com. Is that right? That's right. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, David. Thanks, James. All right. I'll see you. Bye. David, any final comments uh, for the listeners here? Yeah. A few other things I wanted to point out was the property really benefits from a low turnover percentage. 26% uh, of the residents have lived at the property for three years or longer. There's a handful of residents that have lived here since the 90s. Uh, so occupancy is, is remaining high. There was a management switch over the summer where the owner switched to Wayner. Um, and so since that point, the property has been really well occupied is sitting at 96% occupancy today. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks.